So today we will see a generalized architecture of a microprocessor and how a microprocessor actually works. So I will be explaining using this diagram. So here the basic blocks of microprocessor are listed here. Uh, we are not giving any details about internal architecture because we will be studying microprocessor as a general purpose microcomputer. So we won't be using at this stage we won't be using any examples like uh, we won't be using architectures like Z80 or 8086 or 8085 but in uh, the upcoming videos we will discuss about 8086 and based on 8086 we will design our own 16-bit microprocessor so before that we will need to understand how a microprocessor works actually so on the right most corner of this video we will see something called as clock heartbeat so the clock heartbeat is a <coughs> oscillator actually that is connected to the microprocessor because uh, any type of computer the operations need to be done in synchronization so for that synchronization purposes we need to have something called as a clock so whenever a clock beats so it's like a heartbeat uh, our heartbeat uh, is uh, in human time considering our heartbeat is used to synchronize our body functions like respiratory respiration and all those things so in similar ways the heart of the microprocessor is the clock okay so it keeps the track of all the operations and it provides synchronization so whenever a clock is generated a bit by a clock is generated so the frequency of the clock is what decides how fast your microprocessor is okay so currently there are different types of clocks available uh, right from 2 to 4 megahertz to like uh, about 8 to 16 gigahertz as well <coughs> a lot of variation is there depends on what kind of processor we are designing that's not our concern currently okay so then there is something called as memory up there so in memory also there are two types actually uh, we can divide in two architectures actually memory as well as data uh, one is the Howard architecture and other is the one human architecture so we will discuss it in some other video but currently consider it as a memory so wherever your data is stored temporarily or permanently anytime anything so it is the memory and then there are external peripherals that are connected to the microprocessor so external peripherals can be anything a coprocessor or a DMA controller or anything like that and then there are internal resources so here internal resources can be your scratch pads that is the general purpose registers or any kind of things ok so these are the these are the few main blocks of a microprocessor and apart from that <coughs> there are three buses on a microprocessor every microprocessor has these three buses ok that are data bus, address bus and the control bus the data bus is responsible for the transfer of data between the microprocessor and its peripherals or memory or any kind of thing ok so it actually carries the data that is to be sent and the address bus actually tells us the address where the data is to be delivered the data bus and address bus in most of the microprocessor is multiplex ok uh, multiplex in the sense they use the same pins I would say so most of the cases this address and data bus are multiplex like uh, in our 8086 the address bus is 20 pin ok so in that 20 pins the 16 pins are the data pins they are multiplex pins at one clock cycle see the clock uh, at the start of the diagram at one clock cycle at any given one clock cycle they will act as a data bus and in some other clock cycle they will act as the address bus ok so they are multiplexing between each other ok and finally there is a control bus which denotes which operation is to be done ok so there are like read operation, write operation then there will be variations in the read and write operation as well that is there will be a memory read memory write then there will be a IO read, IO write ok IO devices that is the external peripherals and all those things ok and <coughs> this is the basic working of a microprocessor so this was a preliminary video which showed how a microprocessor 
transfers data or how the data flows between the microprocessor, the actual operations as to how we perform the data operations is dependent characteristic from every processor to another. Okay. So we will from the next video onwards we will actually study the architecture. So I will <coughs> take smaller parts of this architecture like the clock, the microprocessor, memory, peripherals, interresources and likewise I will explain that stuff in much detail. Okay. So for now this is enough for you. Okay. Thank you.